Well, this is N4LQ. I'm demonstrating my um, 10 Tech um, 1056T kit here, and I built for 40 meters. Um, and this is the N3ZI DDS2 uh, VFO, which was a kit that I assembled in this uh, cabinet. And uh, this is a homebrew uh, analog audio filter here. Uh, very simple filter and uh, the MFJ speaker. Um, it does sound very good in, uh, this is the volume control. Quite good here. This is your uh, uh, audio filter that's built into the 1056 and I've got a bypass switch down here to, so I can bypass it and enjoy uh, a real hi-fi type audio and uh, this is the RF gain and I'm not using the VFO knob for obvious reasons. Uh, the VFO in this thing is, is very unstable and drifts, so this is much better. <laughs> the ASU, uh, the Mark V and the 2000D uh, works extremely well in AM. But I've used the Ranger uh, when I got very interested in getting AM again. 82. I picked up a bunch of Rangers, which when they were cheap, they were only about $30, $35. And then you could, I mean, they were excellent condition, the ones I got hold of. And the A4 I bought uh, about two years later. As you can hear, the uh, the audio filter really does uh, the trick. It still quite well. It does done a few things to it, replaced a bunch of capacitors in it. And uh, 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 I just have one little problem. <laughs> This VFO knob came off of a um, an old Johnson transmitter, and the crank handle comes in handy. The way this thing works, the the more you crank it, the faster the tuning rate gets. This F shows up, and that means fast. <laughs> so we're heading down into the uh, CW part of the band, and uh, we should be able to pick up some C. There's the audio filter, the audio filter in the 1056. Now here's the, uh, so it gets pretty sharp. Love it. It's an excellent receiver. It's very uh, enjoyable to listen to because it's so clear. You don't hear any band noise. Almost no QR Nancy. Okay, thank you for watching.